Single plane swing review, week number three. We're doing full shots with irons. Let's get it. Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to try and help your game. As I said before, this is week number three in the single plane swing review. If you haven't checked out the other videos, weeks one and two, go back and check those. Week one was kind of an intro, and week two was, as I said, start small with small clubs. I've done several swing reviews in the past, gone through different methods and, and given these kind of in-depth reviews where I do things for maybe a month or two or sometimes longer. This is no different. We're doing the same thing again. I'm going through and using my interpretation of what Mo Norman developed as the single plane swing as interpreted by Todd Graves and Kirk Younga and various other coaches and, and videos that I've seen available on YouTube. It's kind of a DIY, build your own single plane golf swing. Before we get started, what do y'all think of my shirt? I made this myself. I don't know if you can see it. There's a guy named Cody Lundeen. I don't know if you ever saw the show Dual Survival on Discovery. It was several years back, but Cody Lundeen was one of the guys on there, and he had a couple of little phrases like that that he would use. One of them was, the more you know, the less you need. And another one was, knowledge is power, and it's very lightweight. Hey, be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I really feel like I'm starting to groove this swing. It's becoming more and more natural to me, and there's a few things that I think have really helped me and maybe they can help you. I'd love to share them with you. Let's get through these shots first. Man, hot out here. Look, Garmin R10, uh, when you're on the driving range, a lot of those shots look like they're going to the right. It's reading as right. A lot of that can be down to the placement of the device itself and how you're lined up, whether the golf ball is in a certain spot or not. So I found that on the driving range and on the golf course, there's a, there's a huge difference because when I'm on the golf course and I'm actually playing around on the simulator, it, it doesn't do that. They fly really pretty true. What I've seen on the golf course, I've been hitting a lot more fairways and I've been hitting a lot more greens. They fly really true and the yardages are also longer than on the driving range. I can't explain that really. That's just got to be down to the device. So some of these yardages and some of these ball flights, don't, don't put too much stock in those. We're going to find out. Next week, I'm going to be on the golf course. Week number four is an on-course test. Now, as far as some of the things that I have learned thus far in trying and experimenting with this swing. Number one, as I said in last week's video, the back of the left hand and thinking about that as the club face. When I take it away, I'm really trying to make it on plane here. As you can see in the video, 
down the line, my club is still getting a little bit across the line rather than being parallel, pointing down the target line, but it's way better than it was. If you watched week one and you saw some of the video, I was getting way across the line. Now it's just a little bit across the line at times when I tend to get a little bit longer backswing. I'm working on shortening the backswing, but again, that left hand, I'm trying to just get the back of that left hand on plane and then work the left hand and all of that down to where the club face is squaring up and really, as I said in week two, keep the back of that left hand moving down the target line through the golf ball instead of at the golf ball. The next thing is something that Todd Graves teaches. He teaches to kind of brace against that right leg and turn around that right leg and then keep it planted on the ground to swing around yourself. I have personally found that it's a combination for me. I don't always keep my right foot completely planted until after impact, but I always stay braced against that right leg now. It really helps get that wind up and that torque and that power built up that you can then deliver back into the golf ball. Next on the list is, is just trying to nail the setup. Now again, it's not perfect. It's not exactly where it needs to be. I'm sure if Todd or Kirk took a look at my setup, there would be some little things that they would move around and tweak, but it is improving. It is getting better. My back is not quite as hunched as it has been in the past. Uh, again, I'm not as across the line at the top. My setup, I'm really feeling that right arm trying to be under almost like a knife hand. And then this one this way. It's almost like I, I feel my hands this way. So that the right hand's working this plane and the left hand is working this way. So trying to dial in that setup, it's getting a little bit more ingrained each week. And finally, I did a video a long time ago about really kind of taking your time with the swing, not to get in such a rush to A, hit it hard, and B, hit it fast. Really kind of slow things down. The more time you give yourself in the swing to let things develop, the more time that if something gets a little bit out of whack, you have to get it back on track and fix it before impact. It may have been Lee Trevino. It may have been Trevino. He's my favorite golfer of all time, and I listen to anything that Trevino says. I think he is just fantastic. He's entertaining, he's a legend, and he really, really has studied the game of golf. And I think that may have been his tip. He was saying that if you give yourself a little bit more time in the swing to allow things to unfold and develop, you can really start to, to, to dial things in and hit your positions and make great contact with the ball. You're, you're looking more at the technique rather than just the slash and stab type mentality that so many of us fall prey to. And I myself have definitely fallen into that trap several times over the course of the last couple of years. But if I slow it down and I just take a little bit more time and I stay focused on that swish going through the ball toward the target and not at the ball, and I don't lose focus, it has helped me out tremendously. I can't even tell you how much more consistent and how much more solid I'm striking the ball now as just a result of that one little tweak. Well, we're gonna put this to the test on the actual golf course next week. Week number four, we're gonna be testing out the driver and see how it really does because again, on the Garmin R10 driver in here, it just does not read correctly. I just don't use the driver when I'm on the range here or when I'm playing a golf course here. I never use it. The most I ever use is a hybrid off the tee. Uh, I'm gonna be making some changes to the lab, pushing this screen back, getting a new screen. All that's coming. Hopefully that will give it more ball flight that it can read and it should be a little bit more accurate. But we're gonna find out from the on-course test next week, like I said, we're gonna see the driver, we're gonna see how many fairways I hit, we're gonna check out how many greens I hit, we'll get true yardages in the actual real world as opposed to the simulator world, so we can, we can test all that. I'll be using the Golf Pad app, my GPS tracking device, so stay tuned for that. Before I roll out of here, I, I just wanna say, I can't tell you enough how much I absolutely appreciate the support and the love that I get from the GTD fam out there. It, it, it's the wind in my sails. It's keeping me motoring through the water toward my destination. Uh, I'm always saying in the beginning that I'm using my game to help your game, but it, truth be told, it is a two-way street. So many of you out there have helped guide me in the right direction or said something in such a way that just clicked in my head. So we're all helping each other. It's a real communal effort. All the comments, they're not just for me. It's comments that other people can come in and read as well. And maybe, just maybe, you say something in just such a way that it clicks for them. And I really just love 
that that is a possibility. And I like to think about that. So again, thank you so much for all the support, the subscriptions, the comments, even a thumbs up, just a thumbs up on a video means so much. I can't even tell you. I will see you in week number four on the course. You'll get to see driver. You'll get to see real yardages. We'll get to see actual stats and we'll see if this has made an improvement in what really matters, the score. See you in the next video.